what I'm after here, and this is pretty much the highest range you can set this oven, mm -hmm. but I'm less interested in bottom heat at all. Like, the shells are already cooked, yep. but if we were to approach it more like you yeah. see pizza shops where you get a little bit of char and you still have plenty of this color too, like. Oh, I see what you mean. Kind of like a salamander, just like the top part cooking down. Yeah, like some color, not an overwhelming amount. The softness is good, but a lack of any kind of color here ends up presenting like underbaked somehow. Even though it's already a fully baked yeah. product at this point. Yes, sir. Uh, so these are our Roman style pizza shells, and we'll probably have to do a more extensive uh, segment on how all these come together. And also, Luis, you can just keep doing your thing. Don't worry about me. Yes, sir. Um, but let's wait for that to come up. Come to temp, right? It's probably good anyway. I'll, if if you need to run and check on something for two minutes, it's probably you probably got two three minutes. Yeah, that's not a problem. So just come back. Yes, sir. Let's continue. I'll, be right back. I'll talk about all these pizzas in the meantime. I just want to first offer a disclaimer that pizza is about as new to us as milling, and it's something that we're interested in. And I'm not going to pretend that my labeling of something is everybody's expectation. The conversation can get kind of hot or heated over naming conventions, what kind of pizza is what. I remember going back and forth with a bunch of people when we were doing this, and there apparently is even a debate in the pizza community about what Roman pizza actually is. And I went through all of the various uh, different styles that have come to be. Uh, there are shops that are following this kind of an approach and calling this Roman pizza. I felt like it was a good name for the product, uh, for what it is. Um, and that's essentially a strong uh, sourdough focaccia that has been baked golden brown in a little bit of oil on the first round of baking, topped with whatever pizza style topping you can think of. Um, the varieties in this genre of pizza are you know, endless. You get a product that's thicker in nature and serve it by the slice out of a pastry case. Some people just enjoy it cold because they want a quick bite. We can reheat it uh, on the spot and um, serve a really nice, hot, uh, delicious slice. Or people can take it on the go and heat it wherever they end up. Uh, it's a really nice expression of creativity. So. We don't have a set menu on it yet. We're very happy with how the shells are going. That is the dough underneath. That's the bread part. That's the part we really inherently understand. And the reason we chose this style of pizza is it's very well suited to bread ovens. Um, our ovens don't really go as hot as you would want for the very thin style pizzas that are very popular. Um, but there's a way to make even this style of pizza uh, more artisan. Uh, and it's a beautiful way to experience different flavors, get some protein with your bread. Uh, so we're leaning into this and seeing where it takes us. We have uh, pepperoni and salami with a little bit of mozz, pretty simple, uh, nice red sauce. Uh, we have a veggie pie here that has some pepperonis um, and cheese. Uh, it's it's got a little bit of uh, action from the pepperonis that, but it's still a really kind of veggie forward pie. Uh, this one's been very popular. It's a pesto artichoke. And uh, Luis adds some red onions as well as some uh, diced jalapenos for just a little bit of extra heat and flavor on this one. Uh, and then we have what's going to be a traditional margarita pie. Currently it's just the tomatoes and mozzarella. But what we'll add to this is, uh, of course, basil after the bake. So uh, Luis is pretty much ready to fire these soon. Still coming up in temp. Let's avoid this. Uh, We've never had the luxury of makeup there, and the question is, is it actually a luxury or is it just a nuisance? Uh, 
because I definitely learned not to powder stuff underneath. <laughs> I'm still wondering whether the steam in this part of the bake is worthwhile. Actually, arguably it might not, but I have the damper released, so trying to create some instant heat on the top. Uh, the way that the steamed heat transmits in the oven, it's just, it's kind of intensive. But then hoping to immediately release and build color in the final um, top. The shell itself is already baked at this stage. It baked about probably 30, 40 minutes ago at least, if not an hour. We bake those bottom heat heavy um, in light amounts of oil. So it's like, it's a bit of a searing process, if you will, whereas the finish is happening now. So it's a two-stage bake. Uh, we'll have to devote a whole day where we go start to finish on pizza. Uh, it's still something that we're very much uh, experimenting with and finding our way through. We hope that it's an area of business that we can extend our bakery into the all-day segment where there's more reason to come by a window at night on Main Street in Mesa and pick up a slice of pizza while you might be um, crawling around to the breweries there uh, on Main Street. Uh, we also are putting in a service window oddly here. And in the upcoming location we're building in the downtown Phoenix district, we expect the same kind of nighttime traffic. So we're trying to meet our audience where it is uh, and still do something that's very rooted in who we are. Yeah. I would push this just a little longer, get the like curled up yeah, yeah. meat. Well, that's perfect. Let me go shift nuts and basil by the time I get that done. Okay. I can also babysit this for you a little. Okay, okay. It'll cool the stones to some extent, which is fine by us, but the top heat it's is all... Like drop it down yeah. like exponentially. Yeah, so at the very end of the stage of the bakes, if you want to watch, you can. If I mean, I kind of like to be the one to make the final judgment call between what amounts to two or three percent. Like, yeah, you know what, what I'm you mean. I know saying? Exactly what you mean. Like, especially with four varied products, maybe the the one pie just requires like seventy seconds longer. I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, and the only way you can really measure it with your eyes. That's so true. Don't use the second one for pesto. I'm gonna push this last margarita just a little more. I think I pushed this one a couple seconds too long. I'm really happy with that one. I'm pretty happy with this one as well. Okay, I would grab a spatula, yeah. Push it. Well, people are already waiting for the pizza, so that's a good sign. Which one do you need? That one's perfect now. Have you folks tried it yet? No. We're really enjoying uh, uh, experimenting with these. Uh, People get really creative with this style of pizza, so it's pretty well suited for it.